This is Kevin from JJ Hat Center. This is hats and guitars. Okay, we talk about both here, uh, mostly hats, but uh, there is definitely a connection. Um, guitar players, uh, a lot of them wear hats, and uh, a lot of hat wearers, you know, like music, like guys with hats, Stevie Ray Vaughan, dudes like that. And, are just interested, you know, whether they're a musician or not, and um, that's also my thing, you know, I'm working 25 years or more in hat shops, uh, pretty much most of my life, and um, I'm definitely a musician, you know, I've done the whole thing, touring, recording, and everything, not... Not as much as I'd like to. Um, I actually gave it up um, some years ago, professionally, um, so that I may stay at home and uh, have a family, which is uh, much more rewarding in many, many different ways for me. So enough about me. Let's talk about why we're here today, all right? We're going to talk about The Whippet by Stetson. We're going to talk about the Style Master by Akubra. Okay, made in Australia. Stetson, made in the USA. Okay, Stetson Whippet from USA. We're going to talk about the Style Master from Australia. And then we're going to talk about the Hamilton from the Czech Republic, from Salentino. Uh, Salentino is the oldest hat company of all three. Uh, they're actually from, uh, you know, like the uh, 1800s officially. It's when they started. It was very late 1800, but they predate the other companies, and um, they tend to give you a lot of bang for the buck because they're from Czech Republic and not, uh, you know, Italy or USA or England. Um, we uh, we get the quality, we get the style, the colors, the craftsmanship, and um, not all the added costs, you know, like the employee costs, the uh, the advertising, and you know the the high rents and everything. So, you know, a lot of that fat is trimmed out. So you wind up getting a little bit more expensive hat for the same money or slightly less. Um, we talk about all three. There are three equivalent, uh, you know, teardrop models. They have that two and a half, two and three eighths inch brim look. Um, it's a little bigger than this. It's more like the green hat I wear all the time. It's a classic, I call that a classic brim fedora. Two and three eighths, uh, sometimes two and a half. They're very hard to tell the difference. You, you kind of can. And then, then you start spotting two and a quarters, like uh, the Cyrus, which also just looks like a two and three eighths, but just a tiny bit smaller. It's almost like subliminally smaller. Like, you know, just the binding part is missing or something. That's how tiny it is. Um, and the same thing with the two and a half. You know, like when you look at a temple, it's just a little bit longer than like a whippet, you know, but so tiny the amount is like almost a subliminal difference so I, I put them in the same sort of category classic brim hats two and three eighths two and a half and stuff um, all right thing about the temple is it is two and a half on the sides and it's two and five eighths front and back so front to back it looks more sort of you know fedora-ish but the width look is about the same two and a half you know so I, I lumped that into the same category the Hamilton the Whippet in the style master, an Australian, an American, and a European hat. We got three continents battling each other. The battle. Ding, ding, ding. All right, let's start the shootout. Okay. The whippet is incredible. Okay. Um, the felt is very good. I'm not going to say it's good enough because um, it's better than that. It's it's very reliable. Um, we don't get problems with whippets. Just years and years, hundreds and hundreds of these pallets, you know, these big truckloads of whippets. We don't get problems with them. Um, Stetson's a little weird in terms of like sometimes when you see new hats, there are uh, some threads you gotta cut. It's around the bow area, right in the, the ribbon bow area. Um, they're tacked down with invisible see-through thread, kind of like nylon fishing line. It's a nylon invisible kind of uh, transparent thread. So, uh, you'll see, like, you know, there's somebody who's paid to just cut the stitches, and cut them and cut them, 
but they, you know, they whack it kind of fast, and sometimes there's little, you know, nibs of it left. So you have to take a nail clipper and just clip those little nylon strings. Other times it'll go from one stitch to the next stitch. It'll be connected. You know, you wonder how the inspector missed it. Um, but, you know, you clip it. You clip it off and the, the integrity of the hat is perfect. The stitch came out good. They're just connected. You have to just clip the excess off. So um, that's something we see. We see some of those loose threads, but they're kind of like, in a way, it's only the band, first of all. It's not the hat. It's a piece of ribbon that goes around the band, a ribbon, one strip, okay, sewn down. And then this right here, the part where the two pieces of ribbon come together, it's covered by a cross piece of ribbon and then there's a bow so the actual bow is one piece and then the ribbon ring is one piece the bow covers up the what do you call it the seam you know the, where the two ends of the ribbon come together in your bands there's kind of like a little rough area of stitches or you know like a staple something like that it would look like they cover that with the bow the bow is another piece goes right on top of that. So if you're thinking about taking your bow, your band off, and then putting it back on, changing a different hat, it doesn't come off in one piece. It comes off a plain piece of ribbon and the bow. So, you know, you can't do that. Um, you can't change bands. You can put stuff on top of it, you know. Like uh, Tomas wanted to take the band off and put rawhide on it. And I think it would look better if you keep your band on and put the rawhide over the bands because once you get the band off, you cut it off, you can't put it back on. All right, let's get off this tangent. Back to the middle, guys. All right. The US one has the styling. It seems to have the crown that everybody likes. The crown isn't too big, it's not high. It's not like one of those purest things, like when you get a little further into the fedoras and you want them to be higher and more authentically. It's it's lowish, but it's like a regular crown, you know, and people like that. Where the Cooper Style Master has a little bit extra height just in the front, just in front. So what you can do is you can really easily just lower that, you know, and then it's, it's done. Um, but it gives you the option to wear the top like really high and nostalgic or just kind of low and regular. Um, it's super easy to fix that just by the way you pinch it. You pinch the sides and also pinch the down, pinch it down the height. So you wind up getting a little slope here. If it was up there, you, you pinch it down, you pinch the sides, you wind up with a regular crown. So the Style Master, okay, the felt itself on the Akubra, they make the, the, sort of like the best felt in terms of going in the rain, going in the snow, and will the hat be okay the next day? There's something about their hat, it's, you know, they make their hats a little different from everybody else, differently. Um, they're a bit stiffer, maybe, but it's, it breaks in nicely. It's not very stiffer, it's not like a western hat, just a nice, firm ruggedness. They're rugged, they're thick. The Kruger's felt is going to last the longest, probably. Everybody sort of acknowledges it. You know, their felt is, you know, the best bang for the buck right now in terms of will the felt do good in the rain? Will it do good in the snow? How long is it going to last you? Will it last me a lifetime? Um, is it a no-worry hat? All those things. Um, it doesn't quite have the same nostalgic styling as the U.S. Whippet. The Stetson with it has a wider binding, which most people like because it looks like an old sort of Bonnie and Clyde hat or, you know, a gangster hat, you know, Iron Shane, Tommy Guns, and all that stuff, you know. Um, if you remember that episode of Star Trek, uh, uh, A Piece of the Action, you could Google image that. Star Trek, A Piece of the Action, it's when uh, Spock and Kirk went to this planet that was just like Chicago in the 1940s. Everybody wore gangster suits and hats and stuff. And they were incredible hats, bound edges, beaver, all furry ones, light blue beavers, white ones, everything was furry, bound edge, wide brown, big bows, you know, padded shoulders, big colorful ties. It was amazing. Um, that's kind of the whippet. The whippet looks like that. It's slightly more exaggerated with the edge and stuff, where the Style Master has a thinner binding, and so does the Hamilton. The Hamilton's going to look the most sort of European, um, where the Stetson Whippet teardrop is very, you know, traditional, boxy and stuff, kind of high, boxy wide. The Hamilton comes down a little lower, 
and it's a little bit skinnier on the sides. It's lower height and it has a little bit more kind of a sculpted kind of a flow to it. So I'm going to say it looks more graceful, more European, more sort of a GQ, classy, understated version of the Whippet. The binding is thinner. The crown is a little different, but the, uh, the Whippet's going to look a little bit more nostalgic. Now, in terms of looks, the, um, the Akubra also has this height in the front, so the front kind of goes up, you know, here, just the front area. Some people like it because it gives you this little authentic thing, you know, high. Um, you get to shape your crown, you know, like all up there and stuff. And it looks really cool. That's part of that authentic thing. But if you don't like it, you just pinch it down like that, and it's regular height. Um, it's a one second, you know. It's like you don't even have to get it steamed. You could just lower it, you know. Just kind of pinch it lower. People tend to, if they want it lower, they'll pinch it that way almost subliminally. And the top will just kind of come down because they're, you know, they're doing this pinching the top too. And then after that pinch, you know, there was up there and now they pinch it down. So yeah, you just slowly pinch it down on that center crease, bring that down. Um, it's a little higher in the front. The felt is very, very special because it's almost like a safari felt. You can just get it wet and wet and wet and wet. Hang it up and stuff, you know. Do all the right things. I say keep it out of uh, out of rain, out of heat, so that you know the leather doesn't dry. Nothing shrinks, dries up. But yeah, it's very, very rain proof. The whippet is made in USA. It's a good thing, you know. Right now, uh, with our economy being so uh, you know strange and everything, everybody has all kinds of doubts. You know, what's what's going to be. The next few years, you know, will the U.S. Uh, help heal itself now? But uh, made in USA is a good thing right now. Um, it's nice for everybody to make money globally, yes, of course. But uh, I think U.S. companies can use the, um, the push. Um, companies like Stetson uh, have a lot of uh, people that I know who work for them. Um, and I'd like that company to succeed. It tends to be the company that uh, most of my viewers like the best. Most hat wearers like it the best. They like the name Stetson. They like supporting Stetson. They like Westerns too. Stetson is like, you know, the Harley Davidson of, you know, or the, you know, it's the last word, the Gibson or the Fender or the Harley Davidson. It's the, um, it is the the hat, and that's just uh, you know you could say, well, I'm a resist all man. Well, resist all and Stetson both come from the same factory. They're both made by exact exactly the same people. Um, it's just a different line. They put a different lining in there, and they type in different print. You know, resist all. Um, it's a different line made by the same people. It comes out of the exact same place. Just has different boxes, different tags and stuff. So if you like Resistol better than Stetson, it's a style thing because they're, they're pretty much the same stuff, made out of the same stuff. Um, company named Hatco um, or Hat Brands. Hatco um, is a very big company. They sort of gobbled up a lot of the big hat companies um, years ago when things were slower and some of the companies were in danger of you know, maybe them going bankrupt. They bought them and they really put good money behind them, uh, modernized them, you know, uh, and uh, made them able to be distributed all over in different cities. So, you know, they're a great thing, Hatco, but they do own um, Resistol, Stetson, Dobbs, uh, Charlie One Horse, and God, who else? Yeah. And uh, there's another company called uh, Dorfman Pacific. That's another huge company. They they make a lot of uh, hats that you also know uh, and see all over the world. They uh, own other brands, too. They own Biltmore now. So I'm going to say like this. Made in USA is a good thing. Um, it's not the only good thing. There are other good places too. The Spanish hats, the Italian hats, uh, the Australian hats, they're wonderful. Um, the Czech hats, 
very, very good. They have a long history of making the felt for many, many felt, uh, you know, suppliers. So, you know, if you're getting custom hats or, you know, expensive hats of this, you know, a lot of those people get their felts from Czech Republic because you can get like a really nice beaver uh, or a rabbit uh, hat body, on an unshaped body at a good price, where it's probably, you know, extremely more expensive if, if it was made in the US, uh, much more expensive. So uh, yeah, and, and the quality is great. It's just like super quality. Um, the three differences to me, the uh, Cougar is going to be the most outdoorsy. Uh, it's a super performance felt, almost like a Western kind of a braid felt in a dress hat, you know, in a uh, fedora shape nostalgic fedora, you know, teardrop. Um, the Whippet is the classic. That's, that's the classic, you know, like nowadays you could put the word Les Paul into Google and there'll be 300 different companies that make a Les Paul type guitar that's exactly the same with one little change. Uh, some of them worry about copyright infringements, some of them don't. Um, you know, they just can't get them all. Um, but there's only one original, you know, there's one Gibson Les Paul, and people want that. That's the one they want. So Whippet is, come on, Stetson Whippet is the one. It looks like, it looks like the real deal. It has a very classic look. Um, we do colors in the Whippet, which are nicer than some of the other colors, too. Like, um, you know, their particular gray is really nice. I'm going to say the Yukubra gray is really special, too. It has kind of a bluish haze to it. But their gray is authentic. It looks like something from the old movies. And there are so many actual movies that we've sold that hat to stylists and wardrobe people um, in that color, the caribou gray. Um, you know, I can't even list them. We did it for some. I confuse them all. There's white color and blacklist and all these TV shows. Um, all those sort of untouchable type movies. The Irishman. We did all the hats for the Irishman. Well, I don't know if we did all, but we did many, many, many. They came in for weeks getting hats for the Irishman. I heard you paint uh, houses movie. The Joe Pesci and stuff. Um, that movie... They might have gotten other hats from other sources too, but a good deal was definitely from JJ's because, you know, we, we sold them hats like every week they would take boxes of hats for that flick. <coughs> Pardon me. So what I'm getting at is uh, there's an authenticity to it. That's the hat, you know. The Hamilton is a thinner binding. If the wide binding bugs you, the Hamilton is great. The crown to me looks a little more sculpted and a little bit more beautiful in a way. The sets and crown is a little different. It's a little bit more blockier and square and very kind of, uh, I don't know, classic looking, I guess. Like kind of very even, symmetrical, where the, the Hamilton crown kind of comes a little lower. It's got a little bit more sort of highs and lows. It's sleeker, sort of. Um, it's, a, it's not as wide of a teardrop like a, you know, like a big oval like this, kind of a big pair. It's more like a thin, narrow pair. And, um, and the bow, the actual bow, it happens to be my favorite bow and band on any hat that exists anywhere. It's true. The little cross piece on the uh, Hamilton, instead of being like a little piece like this, like every other hat, it's a square, so it's a big square like that, and it looks really Art Deco. Um, so if you ever get a hat band made, you know, from Van or Hatmaker, tell them you want it to look like a Hamilton band, because that's just the coolest band ever. And take a look at it. Look at the Hamilton. And I'll probably have a thumbnail, you know. But um, that little square piece in the middle just looks so, you know, instead of being like two fingers like this, it's wide, and it's a perfect square, and it's pleated to something about their band it's a it's a double bow um but their bow looks the best the cross piece it it's just like art deco you know it looks like empire state building kind of stuff you know like imagine the empire state building you know way back then you know like when they were building it everybody you know wearing those hats black and white and stuff that kind of art deco empire state building 40s film noir thing 
that hat has that bow. Um, it's just got that Fillmore thing in spades, just more than any other hat in a way. I wish like the Whippet had that bow, then it would be the perfect hat. You know? Um, a lot of people don't like the Whippet crown, like vintage purists, because back in the old days, in the 40s, it was higher and baggier, and you could shape it yourself, and it was a big, you know, dang bag. But nowadays, this is the crown people want. It looks good. It doesn't require hand shaping. People don't understand that. You had to break these things down yourself. The hats weren't ready off the shelf all high like that. You had to kind of lower it and do your thing with it, you know? Squeeze it and do your little hand shaping, lowering. Most people didn't wear them all high. Some people wore it high in the front, other people did wear it high, but I'm going to say a percentage of the folks did what we call breaking down their hat. So, you know, if it's like that, they may break it down like, you know, okay, they'll bring it down a little lower here. And then by the time they're finished, the hat is, it's quite different. It doesn't have the same shape as, you know, when you first handed it to them when it looked like this, you know. It's much more, uh, you know what I'm saying, kind of sleek or whatever. It's hard to do with one hand, but you're, you're getting what I'm saying. I think the Hamilton has the nicest teardrop of all, um, although I think the... Kubra has the best weatherproof felt, the longest lasting felt. I think the Stetson kind of looks the best, and the felt is really good quality. There's, it's just no problems with it. Um, but like any other dress hat, I wouldn't wear it in tons of rains and stuff, you know. It drizzles, the light rains, the lighter snow is still going to be okay. Um, but if that's your intention to use it like, okay, I don't like umbrellas, I don't want to wear a hat this winter, and you want snow to pile up on it, you just get the Akubra, because that's like a, it's almost like a bush hat, a safari hat. It's meant for like outdoorsy, heavy abuse. Where the step, and, and it's in a dress shape. With Stetson is a more authentic dress hat. It's a little bit lighter weight, it's softer. Um, it's not meant for big rains and blizzards. I'm sorry, I'm itches. Okay. It's not meant for that, so if you get caught out there, yes, it's rainproof, but I'm going to say go with the approval for the rainproofness. The Stetson is an all-around gray hat. It's probably not going to fail on you in terms of rainproofness. Most people just own them till they die, you know. Um, we don't get any, we barely get people bring them in for reshapes. They just they tend to just last. It's a very stable hat by Stetson. Um... You know, they have their little thread. Sometimes you got to cut, but it's a non-issue because after 30 seconds, that's gone. And for the, you know, the rest of the 30 years you own it, was, they're not there. So it doesn't affect the uh, quality of the hat. Um, the Hamilton might be my favorite, I think. Yeah, I would say the Akubra, I tend to recommend a lot to people because of the durability and the quality. The Hamilton, I like myself because of that little bow on the side. It's a, it's a stupid thing, but I think that alone makes it just one of the most handsome hats anywhere. And I'm not really a teardrop guy. I do center creases almost, like, exclusively, pretty much. Um, but uh, the Whippet might be... That's like the 57 Chevy, you know? It's the one that's got the lines that it designed, like, yeah, just right. It looks really good. And the felt may not be as waterproofy, like, you know, in terms of holding its shape, you know, when you compare it to an Akubra. But the, the Akubra hats are a little harder. They're a little stiffer, and they're more kind of outdoorsy hats, where this hat is going to give you a little bit more comfort, a little bit more lightness. And uh, it's an American product, which is nice. And it, I'm going to say the consensus for the people. Most people will say they like the looks of that one the best. And I can understand it because it is the most sort of authentic in a way. Um, if it were me, I would take the bow from the Hamilton. I'd stick it on the Whippet. And I'd have it made out of the Akubra felt. But uh, all three of them are going to do excellent in the rain. They'll be 
fine. You're not going to have problems. But don't wear them as a rain hat. They're not that. They're okay if you get caught in there. Keep your brim up. You know what I'm saying? Flip it up with the brim up, upside down, or hang it. And uh, keep it away from heat. Like you all have a free stick in your box, too. But yeah, if it's pouring out already, buy yourself like a $30 made in China rain hat or something. Or, you know, whatever. Um, use your other fedoras, you know. We'll get in a Kubra, get something Western, you know. Buy a rain hat from us. I'm going to say uh, it's good for most of the year, three quarters of the year, not for the baking summer. And not for when it's zero degrees and you need to cover your ears. You know, maybe you want a knit cap or ear flaps. But it's good for most of the year of Fedora. Um, choose wisely, and I hope you guys, uh, you know, get the one that you like. To be honest, of the three, there's really not a bad choice. They're all really good hats. Uh, I'd be happy with all three. I wouldn't say stay away from this one or that one. We've never had problems with any of them. So they're just like so stable, you know? Um, I don't know if it's that, that edge. The bound edge, I feel, doesn't do much for felt, but you know, maybe it does. Maybe a big bond, bound edge does. Um, couldn't tell you for sure. Could just say it's uh, it's up in the air, you know. Should I tune? I don't feel like tuning. Children behave, and that's what they say when we're together. Thank you. 